so in the previous session we have already discussed about the doses the maximum permissible limits that may be in terms of tlv twa tlv strain lc50 ld50 values etc it is nothing but a uh, doses uh, to your body that may be through the oral entry that may be through the skin entry that may be through the inhalation entry so these doses and the time relationship is called as dose response relationship so dose response relationship is useful to evaluate the toxic effects so these are the useful things especially when we are experimenting these toxic chemicals on the rats and rabbits normally test animals are subjected to lower to higher doses and their death rate in terms of percentage is observed so we have already discussed about this lc0 lc10 lc50 lc100 it means 0 10 50 and 100 are nothing but the percentage chances of death of that particular animal so it can be plotted in terms of figure so this relationship can be plotted in terms of graph so this is the graph where on the x axis dose or concentration is there and on the y axis response is there so this response is in terms of percentage of lethal effect that is percent of death or percentage of killing of that rat or test animals so this graph is linear one it means this dose is going to increase the chances of death is also more so it is a direct relationship so if the dose is more the chances of killing that test animal is also more so depending on the criteria we can identify what exactly the dose can kill to that test animal up to what percent so this is the point where ld5 value is there it means with respect to that particular dose or to that concentration there are 5% chances of killing to that test animal if you observe this ld50 value it means at this point there are 50% chances of killing to that test animals due to this particular dose or concentration and likewise this is the dose or concentration where there are 100% chances of killing or death of that test animal so this relationship is called as dose response relationship so these doses given are expressed in mg per kg of body so normally when we are talking about this dose uh, to protect human being to protect some of the animals etc then we must understand what exactly this mg per kg means suppose say for example if chlorine chemical is present in that working environment and chlorine chemical may enter in our body and suppose there are two working persons are available in that working area and the weight of one of the worker is 50 kg and the second worker's weight is 100 kg so if the chlorine concentration in that working environment is one and the same or uniform in that area and the inhalation of this chlorine particles by both workers are same then the effect or the adverse effect of that chlorine particles on the worker who is having 100 kg weight is lesser than the worker who is having 50 kg weight why it is because these doses are expressed in terms of mg per kg so whatever the milligrams suppose these two milligrams are inhaled by that worker uh, that is of 50 kg as well as of 100 kg so when we are talking about this mg per kg so two milligram per 50 kg and 2 milligram per 100 kg so this concentration is lesser 
when we are talking about this 2 mg per 100 kg because denominator is higher as compared to 50 and that is why when weight is one of the parameter when we are talking about the adverse effect of these toxic chemicals on your body so these mg per kg should be understand by each and every one that is nothing but a dose so these dose response relation can also be expressed as the product of c into t that is concentration and time of exposure so this c into t is equal to constant that is one of the uh, expression of this dose response relationship that is concentration into time so these ct values can be used mathematically to derive rough approximation of other combination of concentration of a chemical and time that would be produce similar effects so we can use this data that is c into t equal to constant or c into t equal to constant and uh, graphical representation so with the help of this graphical representation we can identify what are the chances of fatality of that particular test animal or of that particular person if accidentally they inhale the particular toxic chemicals so for that purpose we can use this dose response relationship then biochemical action of toxic substances so we know about the toxic substances what are the toxic substances and their effects on our body there are different chemicals and their ppm limits or mg per meter cube limits are also given so what exactly the biochemical action so this is the interaction between the toxicant and the body so depending on the concentration of that chemical depending on the state of health of that person depending on the weight of that person and depending on the various parameters of that health of that person this biochemical action is depends so this is nothing but the interaction between this toxicant and the body toxicodynamic phase that is one of the aspect that is effect of toxicant on organisms so organism may be a liver, that may be a kidney, that may be a lung, that may be a central nervous system, brain, etc. So that is one of the aspect, toxicodynamic phase. Then second one is toxicokinetic phase. That is the effect of organism on toxicant. So the effect of organism on toxicant is called as toxicokinetic phase and the effect of toxicant on organism is called as toxicodynamic phase so these two main aspects are very important when we are talking about the biochemical action so this latter phase includes two phase that is toxicano toxicokinetic phases are distribution phases or metabolic alteration of toxicants that is biotransformation so this distribution process includes absorption transport accumulation and excretion of toxicants and it depends on two factors that is physical chemical properties of the substance concern and the structure of the cell as a basic unit of the organism especially structure and properties of the membranes around the and inside the cell so depending on the characteristics of that chemicals absorption transportation or expression may be depends so this is nothing but the distribution process under the toxicokinetic phase and depending on the surface area depending on the respiratory tract depending on the capillary effect and depending on the various parameters this biochemical action can be uh, studied so that may affect on the various uh, organisms which is present in our body uh, through the different types of uh, gases their effects or that may be a local damage that may be a absorption of that chemicals by the bloods or through the ventilation through the 
blood flow and metabolic rate we can identify the absorption rate and we can identify the adverse effects also so whether it is through the git whether it is through the skin whether it is through the ingestion all these biochemical reactions are depend so we have already discussed about the different effects due to the uh, roots of entries that may be or uh, dermatitis that is dermatitis or the diseases which is related to the skin and then we must go for the recognition evaluation of this health hazards so we must identify first what exactly the toxic chemical is what is the concentration what are the effects of these chemicals and then we must identify the maximum permissible limit after identifying we must evaluate we must test we must analyze all these types of chemicals and their adverse effect and then we must think about how to control these types of chemicals in the working environment or how to control at air path or how to control at the end level if accidentally if it is inhaled if it is uh, enter into the body through the oral through the skin or through other sources that may be through the eyes also so if it is the case then how to control how to treat these types of chemicals so this is the general guidelines to recognize to evaluate and to control the health hazards when we are specially talking about these toxic chemicals so these are the general guidelines what exactly the industrial hygiene approach should be by each and every industries so identification of health hazards and extent of their effects on body identification of environmental exposure to workers then recommendation and implementation of process in uh, through the different safe practices or through the ppe then recognition requires knowledge of raw material storage conditions process parameters by products waste generation disposal types of industries operation process flow sheets checklist and msds if you know about the material safety data sheet they can you can obviously control or identify or you can analyze the adverse effects of these chemicals then field survey should be carried out to identify the potential hazards worst cases and other health hazards then by sensory perception and control measures in use the hazard should be accepted and measured in priority of their severity then in evaluating or appraising the toxic effects the factors are nature or substance of exposure that is quality of exposure quantity or concentration of that material duration or length of exposure state of dispersion that is through the dust or through the gas fumes etc intensity or severity of exposure person susceptibility or resistance because every person has different immunity systems in their body and depending on the age also depending on the sex also that is male or female whether the female is pregnant or not depending on the service depending on the routine activities depending on the various parameters these resistance can be built up affinity for human tissues solubility in human or organs sensitivity in human tissues or organs so these are the different factors which are important in evaluating or appraising these toxic health effects there may be a wide variations of these factors so we must go for the environmental surveys environmental monitoring and we must identify the different types of exposure of these hazards and we have already discussed that we must know about the msds because all these types of hazards their limits their precautionary measures and treatment methods that may be a first aid that may be a medical treatment or that may be a control measures all these things are given under this msds and we should identify the different types of 
hazards that may be a biological hazard that may be a physiological hazards that may be a psychological hazards etc to control all these types of health hazards then we must adopt some evaluation technique for the measuring different types of parameters like noise light temperature ventilation heat stresses collection analysis of air sample etc because with the help of these things like temperatures air oxygen level etc we can go for the controlling techniques of this toxic chemicals then for evaluation either air samples are collected and tested in the laboratories we can analyze the concentration of different chemicals with the help of different techniques like gas chromatography high performance liquid chromatography air atomic air absorption techniques or uv spectrophotometer or some other techniques so there are various analytical instruments which can be used to analyze the different toxic chemicals with their concentrations then we must go for uh, recorders for the recording all these types of concentration in their working environment with respect to time then big concentration are important when the vapor is irritant highly odorous or if subjective complaint is obtained so if workers are going to complain for a particular time for a particular period if the eye irritation is one of the issue that may be a pungent smell issue that may be a issues which is uncomfortable or suffocation or asphyxiation etc then all these things should be noted down and should be recorded and then we must analyze what exactly the issues are and how to control these issues are so ultimately we must evaluate all these judgments all these control measures we must adopt and we have to reduce these toxic chemicals from our environment so these dose response relationship then different monitoring techniques different uh, levels like acgh values some state pollution control board guidelines then central pollution control board guidelines or some internet information some other techniques can also be adopted for preventing these diseases for controlling these toxic chemicals in the environment thank you